Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing today? This is Sunday, the 9th of July, 2023. And tonight, we're all going to be talking about composting. And what I really want to find out from you is your tips, your tricks on compost. For me, I can never make enough compost, and that's something I really am trying to change. But before we get into that, let's see if anybody is actually out there. First of all, Turbo Stream is out. A good evening, veg podcasters from a bright and sunny vale of Birminghamshire. Good evening to you. Bally Saloon, good evening. Oh, I'm just home from the plot. Get cleaned and ready to watch the show. Excellent stuff. Uh, Adrian is out there. Uh, hello to you. Hope you are well. Uh, what else have we got? Billy SPB is out there. Hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Uh, David Williams. Hi, both. And anyone that's joined since. Hello to you. Uh, who else have we got? Rebecca is out there. As always, good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Gary Filler is out there. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Digwell is joined and is saying, Hi, how's it going, guys and girls? Good evening to you. Our grave gas is out there. Evening, everyone. Hope you've all had a great week. Good evening to you. Uh, Anna Jones has joined. Good evening, Garners. Good evening to you. Anna Castales, all the way from Canada. Hello from my garden to yours. Uh, and sticking with the international, Idaho Garden Girl. Hello, Richard and everybody in the chat. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Uh, who else have we got? Who else have we got? Stuart Jackson has joined. Evening, Richard and the Veg Army. Yes, I am on YouTube. Good evening to you. Uh, who else have we got? Margaret Peacock. Hi, Rich from me and Dad. Good evening to you both. Scott Ambler has joined. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Um, have I, and I think I think that has caught us up with everybody. But if you are watching, uh, please feel free to comment and join in the conversation. Let me know you're watching as well. It's always good to see uh, who is out there. Don't be afraid. We don't bite. We're a friendly bunch of gardeners, as we like to say here at a Veg Ground podcast. So let's get on with composting. This is something that I think we often do especially as gardeners or grow your owners particularly you know it's something that i believe is just as important as the growing yourself and just as important as the gardening it's such an integral part i know compost heaps may not look pretty they may look unattractive but they are a necessity and of course we compost because we want to make compost we take all our waste materials and we turn it into that that beautiful composted material that adds nutrients to our gardens, to the soils, helps grow better plants, uses a mulch, 101 things that we can use it for. And uh, it's all good fun to do with it. Now, there are several different types of composting methods, some which you might use myself or if you might use a completely different method. The first is hot composting, which is usually done in something like a hot bin. That is where you get the temperature of the compost materials up really, really high. You really do need a big compost heap in order to do this, but if you can get them up really, really high, it will kill off any seeds, anything that might cause issues down the line, um, and you can produce a very quick turnaround of making compost. Then you get cold compost, which is much the same way, but just takes a little bit longer. You don't generally chop up the bits and pieces into small bits to make it hot. Then you've got worm or uh, what's the word? Vermi composting, where worms come along, with, in, such as a wormery. They come along and they take apart all the compost material for you. Uh, then you've got Bokashi as well, which is something I've been experimenting with, where you add a bran. Um, to the material and see what happens. Now, for me, I tend to use the hot composting and the cold composting methods for my garden waste, and I would use my vermi composting and bokashi for my kitchen waste. And I tend to try and just compost anything that is compostable. My way of th thinking of this is anything that was alive is what we're going to use. If it was once alive, we can compost it. I don't tend to do meat or bones or anything like that just because I don't want to attract any rats. 
but in in wormeries or bakashi i believe you can do those anything that was once alive is what i use so that's got the ball started and let's see if anybody has got anything to say on the topic out there already uh david williams says i use daleks plenty of and they seem to work okay yes the dalek compost bins they are plastic they are cheap but they do the job i've got four of those in my home garden and i've got several down on my allotment as well i've got to admit i mean they do the job they do do the job and they fill up nicely. They they hold on to a bit of heat. They hold on to moisture as well. My only problem I have with them is that I feel that in my garden they just stick out like a sore thumb. These plastic containers along one side that just, for me, they look awful. And I'm looking at trying to get some decent, better looking compost devices in the future. Oof, I think only two of my compost bins actually match. The others are very varied, but they do do the job. So Daleks are definitely something that we all tend to use. Um, David says, also have separate Dalek for weeds. Leave these a lot longer, though, used for raspberry flower beds, etc. That's not a bad idea, is it? You take your weeds that might have weed seeds and pop them in somewhere completely different. Um, really, I feel they should be hot composted, but in a complete, a separate Dalek, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Margaret says, we have had bad growing with the clear compost this year. Now, this is not quite what we, we, we've We've been discussing Koya quite a bit over the last few weeks. Um, what have you found with it? Um, how have you used it, Margaret? This is I'm going to be getting um, these people over the back here, Koka and Koya, on a on the uh, podcast at some point to discuss this very thing. So, looking forward to that. I'll say that. Stuart Jackson says, I have two compost bins at home, but six now at the school, one of which can be rolled around the school field. Um, so the rolling around is actually a very good, good point. There are, and I, I've not tried one out myself, but there are compost bins that are available that are like a giant wheel. Basically, you fill them up and you rotate them, and that mixes all the material quite quickly. I think this is a form of vermi com excuse me, vermi composting. I could be wrong, um, but there are some out there that are quite big. I've I've yet to try one of the small ones. That's actually something I'm going to make a note of that rolling compost bin because that's going to be on my Christmas list. <laughs> for possible Christmas presents, because I do want to try one of those in the future. But yeah, the idea being when you compost, if you want to speed up your compost making and try and get a better compost material, you need to turn the compost quite regularly to incorporate a bit of air and to mix the materials in well. Um, and this rolling just makes that a little bit easier. We'll get into the materials in a moment, actually. Toby Stream says, I use a cold composting method as my heat never gets remotely warm. My ambition is to get the heat hot. Um, so what I recommend if you do want to get your heat hot, I still don't think you necessarily get it hot enough. But what you could do is run over everything with your lawnmower and then compost that. It does get a little bit messy and it does take a bit of time beforehand but what it does do is just chop up all those materials nice and small they go into the compost bin nice and easily they create a beautiful compost but they get hot very quickly and when they start to cool down you turn it and it heats up again and the heat that's generated is quite amazing just how much you get because it just i've seen people heat greenhouses and things like that in the past because it gets so hot uh, so, David says, personally, I think Daleks look sexy. Um, well, not the word I already used, but each to their own. Graham Arnold has joined. Evening all. Good evening to you. Anna Jones says, I have six Daleks. Work very well for me, too. As I said, I've got nothing wrong with the actual use of a Dalek. I think they are pretty good. They're cheap. They're, they do the job. I just don't 
if for me, my gun, I just feel they they look a little bit ugly. They stick out a bit. And it might be just me. It might be just my gun design. But I'm looking at ways of changing this in the future. Uh, Digwell says for me, no way for me to compost at home or on the plot. So I have a worm bin, which is okay, but the vermi compost is very strong. So vermi compost, the worm bin, you know, this is one of the methods that I do use at home, mainly my kitchen waste, anything that comes out of the kitchen. Um, I find that that works. Uh, uh, I, I find that that goes best in the wormery because it's less likely to attract rats. Rats can't really get into a worm bin. My preferred compost bin is my sub pod, which is an, um, one that's sort of buried in the ground and it doubles up as a seat. Uh, I plan on getting more of those because I like them and they're a bit more discreet. But they are a wormery. They do bring in the worms to come and chop down all that material but as Digwell says, the, the compost out of it is very rich, very strong. I do find that I need to mix it in with some of my other compost waste to sort of lessen it down and, and make it a bit more easier to use. Uh, Toby Stream says, I can't seem to gather enough material, so just bung it all in and wait. This is a problem that we all have. Getting enough material to make enough compost is one of my challenges. Um I've this I've built on my allotment a really big compost bin as you saw a few months ago which is full already and my idea being I want to get so much compost in that I never have to buy compost in I think it might be a pipe dream but I'm just trying to do that that's my plan Hargrave Gas says four Daleks for me plus a big heap that always has to um oh it has too much grass in it Grass, so if you're producing too much grass, why not use the grass as a mulch, uh, is what I would say there. Uh, just helps suppress those weeds and, and work a bit better, in my opinion. Um, but if you have too much grass, so th this brings us kind of nicely onto the materials, doesn't it? There's a, a mixture of green and browns, and you really want 50% greens, 50% browns, or layer of green, layer of browns, layer of green, layer of browns. And how do we distinguish what green and browns are? Green are generally something like grass clippings, they're nitrogen based, so grass clippings, leaves, anything that is still looking like it's or fresh off. Freshly cut, freshly down. And then the browns would be things like bits of wood, twig, um, cardboard, good one to add in. Um, dry leaves would be brown material because they've lost the nitrogen, they were carbon. And you really want a good 50% mix of either. Easier said than done. Easier said than done, but um, or difficult. Um, so Margaret is saying about the uh, uh coir compost it's too dry the veg is done fantastically in the topsoil mixed with brought compost but that this has last lot for the plants just doesn't hold water this is a common problem people have said with coir but it's not something i found myself you do feel you do need to mix compost in with coir and some nutrients in as well for it to really work uh scott says i built three bay compost area three years ago but shame to say i have not used it to its full effect so hoping i will get some inspiration to do so after this so free bay composting that's the usual method i quite liked charles dowling's method of the three bay compost or how he explained it or how i understood it where the two on the outer side he would fill one up with the greens and one up with the browns and then use the middle one to mix the two together so the green would go in and the browns which i liked because that seemed to make a lot of sense to me i mean if charles dowden does it that's how i understand that could be wrong but i like the idea and then once the middle one's full he then starts filling up the other two uh before I start using them that's how i understand it how i understand it you might have a different opinion on that Stuart Jackson says, ours is like a big ball. It's really good, but they are about 140 quid. The children raised them the money for it. That's why I put it on my compost list. I like it. I like it a lot. 
Digwells says to Margaret, many are reporting poor, poor queer potting compost as it has not been flushed of the seawater used to clean it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I can only talk from my experience. I bought the Coca and Queer brand, which seems to have done me well. The Wilco, not so much, but that's a whole other story. Uh, what have we got? Tell me stream. I looked in my bay by the pot shed. It was full of wood lice. Wood lice do eat rotting material. They are a good thing for the ecosystem. David Williams. I used three freezers worth of food for compost. Amazing how it disintegrates. Oh, the freezer must have broken down there. Um, but we, we actually, I think I've said, we've got a community fridge which basically gets rid of food that's gone out of date. And they, my wife comes back with some of that for the compost heap because it's just no, not edible anymore. Put it in the compost bin. We can turn it into a compost. Uh, Turbo stream. On the plot, I don't have a mower, so the weeds have to go in whole. My Dalek bins at home produce a lovely compost, but it takes a good 12 to 18 months. See, with hot composting, cold composting 12 to 18 months is what I would expect. With hot composting, you can get that down to six months, maybe even quicker. Uh, Nicola says, evening all. Sorry I'm late. Lovely to see you. David says, I've never used Koya. Something in me doesn't trust it. May have to broaden my horizons. It's worth experimenting. Um, I think I think it's worth experimenting with. Uh, so the main component is leaves. Last year I produced a good load of wonderful leaf mould. That's a type of compost, isn't it? Just leaves that have rotted down. A wonderful leaf mould. Anyway, um, let's get through these comments. Uh, we used that large one on a stand that turned via a crank handle. This is one of those turning composts. Not impressed, it's very difficult to turn, so couldn't pot a lot inside and tricky to empty. Wouldn't buy one. Interesting, interesting. Um, as I said, it's on my list because I have wanted one for a while. Idaho says, I have a worm bin, huge compost tumbler, and just bought a large plastic compost bin that I haven't popped together yet. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it the, the bin themselves is quite important, I think. You know, we've got to, I feel, if we can hold the materials in and keep it neat and tidy, it looks better. But there's nothing that says we have to have a bin. And there are some people, and it used to be the old way, isn't it, where you would just pile all your compost material up and let it rot down without any sides or anything like that. So certainly, if you are running that space, something to think about. Uh, Kate says, evening, Veg Army. Sorry I'm late at an, an open gardens event, so I'm full of ideas. How lovely. Cannot wait to go exploring some more gardens. Uh, desperate for it, to be honest. Stuart Jackson, I use all the waste paper for my wife's office. I put it in as shredded paper, great brown items. There you go. Shredded paper. All that junk mail that you might receive, shred that and throw that in with your compost heap to act as your brown materials. I generally find the brown materials is the one that we struggle to find enough of. So shredded paper, added to it. Egg cartons are another one as well. And the inner toilet roll inners, throw those in there as well as your brain brown materials. The good thing with all these is they also add a bit of air to the compost. And air is quite important. I said earlier, if you allow if you mix it up, you allow air into the system and you effectively allow the compost to breathe and not go anaerobic. Uh, so that one of the reasons that we mix compost up we use a fork or we might use a tool is to try and mix up and, and incorporate air into that compost material um Stuart Jackson says can I put coffee grounds in my compost bin yes you can um so coffee grounds can be a bit acidic just to warn you they also <sighs> Slugs and snails apparently don't like them either, but I find that's when it's a thick layer. Um, and the other thing to be careful is, is make sure the coffee grounds have been used. If it's got caffeine in it, caffeine is a natural uh, seed inhibitor. It, it stops seeds from germinating. So caffeine will stop, uh, caffeine can stop seeds from germinating, which may not be a problem in some cases, but just bear that in mind mind 
Uh, David says, when shopping, I always collect the cardboard trays they sell cans of beer in. Ripped up, it works really well and builds up quite quickly. There we go. Um, you know, again, this is all good ideas of where to get these brown materials, cardboard and everything, that we can uh, add into it to 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 make better compost. Uh, Digwell says to Stuart, absolutely, worms, etc. Love the coffee. There we go. Uh, Bally Sin says, I copied Bill and Val this year and made a removable planting lids for my compost bins and grew trailing flowers from which made the, which made the bins look better and helped bring pollinators onto plot. Yes, I see those when I pass there a lot and they've got like on top of their Daleks. It's like a plastic circular thing, I guess, that they plant into. It looks really good, I have to say, and does make the Daleks look a little bit more attractive. There's possibly something we could look at in the future. And what I also like to do on my on my allotment specifically, my compost bins, I actually plant squash plants, pumpkins into those so that they are still using that compost bin for growing something edible, but it also helps feed the pumpkin plants as all the material ruts down. I've done this for years and you actually get really good pumpkins from using the compost heap as a growing media. And as you know, with Charles and Camilla, my crown prince pumpkins down on the allotment, we've actually um, effectively made two beds into which we just filled with compost material to rot down into those beds and we planted into those and they're thriving. Charles has actually produced a pumpkin at the moment. It's young, but it is there um what else have we got uh Stuart jackson says coya buy the best you can then you will see better results i think that's generally true with everything but there are a lot of coya products coming out over the next few months that was evidence at a show i went to um quite recently uh, are coffee grounds classed as a green or brown? And I've heard if you put too much in a compost mix, it can be bad. I'm not sure if it's a green or brown, I'll be honest with you. I think something's going to back my mind saying it's a green. But if you do put too much in, yes, it can be bad. As I said, it can be quite acidic. So it can cause a bit of a problem. Same as why we don't add citrus. Well, supposedly why we don't add citrus or onion skins. I'll tell you what, I add all that to my wormy. I don't care. It all goes in. Um, Turbo Stream says, my tumbler compost bin is used as a storage box. It was a nightmare to turn when even half full. Well, this is quite interesting. I still want to try one, but this is interesting that two of you said that tumbler compost bins can be quite heavy. So this, the great thing is you are able to share this experience with us and find out what happens. Graham says, I've used homemade compost after about six weeks. I did chop all the ingredients up very small, so it doesn't take long for the worms to process it. Indeed, that's one of the tricks that I've said before. I've run over, or I used to run over everything with my lawnmower to get everything nice and small, um, which on a day-to-day basis, -day, I mean, it was difficult because you then had to another sort of, you had another task before you could get on. but at the end of the day, it, it was worth it to get decent compost. Um, the only trouble is uh, when I cut down some of my bushes out the front and we put that all in the garden to to chop up, well, the area where we chopped it up on the grass just looked a mess for ages. And it did pop the lawnmower through its paces. I've actually got a shredder now. Well, I've had it for a while for that very reason so i won't be using a lawnmower for those in the future uh, Anne said we are getting rid of our dalek as our food waste attracts raccoons something we don't have in the uk of course but now just concentrating on the three bed system so food waste this is something i i, I worked out it was just better for me to use the food waste in a wormery or in my sub pod as I just felt that that was less likely to attract rats. I couldn't get it in just better, in my opinion. Uh, Toby Stream says, Hugh Richards did a video where he chopped and dropped on his paths between his raised beds, so you don't even need a heap. It's a good idea. Very good idea, 
um, you, you know, chop and drop. It's a permaculture technique. Um, good idea. Yeah, that's all I can say. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, I told him I can't compost them as I use them as root trainers. And on that same note, Digwell says, if your toilet roll tube has a white inner, then do not use it. It is plastic lined. There you go. So I've not, personally, I've not seen any with a white inner, but if they do exist, they, well, they do exist, sorry. But if you have them, then just bear that in mind, plastic lined, not good. Digwell says, I have a spare bed on the plot, so I'm using it as chop and drop, crop and drop bed with a layer of compost on top. Bit like my composting in situ beds, where I've just filled those up with compost material and just let them rot down with Charles and Camilla planted in them. Uh, they're doing well. They are doing well. Uh... Andrew says, can I use coffee grounds to reduce the alkaline level of a soil? I have some sweet chestnut trees to plant out, but they don't like my soil. A bit too alkaline. I'm guessing you probably could, but you would need a lot of it to make a difference. Um, yeah, th just something to think about. It might, it probably would work, and it, uh, but you would need a lot of it. Uh, Bill and Val have a video, says Digwell, about the compost bin lids. I will check that out. I'll probably ask him, actually, when I'm, I see them. Digwell says, coffee grounds have very little, if any, caffeine, caffeine, so safe to use anyway. Yeah, it's just worth bearing in mind there could be a little bit of caffeine, and if you use it a lot, it could stop seeds. Or if you're going to use it on seeds, I should say, I would still just, just ease off from it. Coffee grounds did nothing to reduce slug damage in my experience. Best to add to the heap. You've got to lay it on thick. You've already, you know, what I found when I used it is that if it was a thin layer, the slugs could tolerate it. If it was thick, all the little bits of coffee got caught around the slugs and the snails and they didn't like it. It's got to be a thick layer for it to do anything. What else have we got? Nicholas says, wet horse manure, green or brown? I'm thinking green. I think it is green as well. Uh, but I, yes, I'm pretty sure it is green. Now, this does bring me on to something else that we, we do need to talk about when it comes to composting. Horse manure or cow manure or any of the other manures that we could be adding to the compost bin. This is something I would love to be able to get hold of. We used to have horse manure delivered to the allotment. Uh, or and before that, I used to go and get, excuse me, horse manure from a supplier. Unfortunately, uh, we haven't had a delivery to the allotment for a while. My horse manure supplier has packed it up, and I could go to a, another stables and get some more horse manure. The only trouble I find is that the actual transporting of the horse manure. I used to carry it in the back of my van by laying loads of tarpaulin down, potted it in bins, but it still made a bit of a mess. And that's not something that I want to do anymore. So I'm looking for a supplier that could actually deliver either horse manure or cow manure to my allotment at home because i have chickens i tend to use their manure a lot more in my compost when i clean out the the chickens i just take all that material and throw it straight into compost bins to rot down and add that that manure to my compost bin it's a good way actually probably of bulking up your supply idaho says i've used closed compost bins or tumblers because rodents invade as well as skunks i do not want to provide a home for any of those absolutely Absolutely. This is one of the drawbacks of composting is that they could attract rats or anything like that. Um, skunks and raccoons are obviously another downside. But closed off does seem to work a little bit better. Difficult, though, isn't it? Stuart Jackson, I found that coffee grounds pot on the gun. I get badgers in my garden. Did not never knew that that would attract badgers, but hey, whatever works. Uh, Anne also says the other issue was a tumbler was a size. It took over four square plus access needed from a side and a handle on the end. A traditional bin would have produced more compost given the same space. I 
Yeah, I've seen one of the big ones that almost look like they are pretty large. They're almost like like a compost bin long ways with a like a frame that you turn the things around. I know what you're talking about, that, and I've always thought they take up um take up a lot of room. So I know what you're talking about with the tumblers one tumbler style compost bins that's one of the reasons i haven't got one but the real one i think take up less space uh tapestry and coffee grounds was very thick layer the slugs in my garden will eat everything newly planted um yeah i can understand that because it is a bit of a issue david says use folded chicken wire at the base of daleks to prevent rodents burrowing under that's actually something i was going to say yeah folded chicken wire at the base stops rodents burrowing under but also every time you pass your compost bin tap it on the side whack it on the side rats don't like that rodents like don't like that and they will soon clear away don't like that little bit of noise and disturbing you've got to do it regularly though but it, again if you have a problem it's worth doing caffeine kills slugs not an approved pesticide in the uk but coffee grounds do not have enough to work unused coffee grounds work wink wink say no more yeah i as I said from my experience i put it on a really thick layer slugs and snails came along and they ran away because they were they they oozed they just had it and they couldn't get rid of it um nicholas says so many horses around me and i do use my van the manure i have come from horses grazing in the fields yeah my i mean my trouble is my van's a work van so it's not ideal for that. And in my camper van, I sleep in. I really don't want horse manure in the back of that. What I really want is a trailer that I can go and collect this stuff with. But I've got a tow bar on any vehicle. Something I should look at in the future. Waste of fresh coffee, though, says to grow. Indeed it is. Um, Nicholas says, I did that chicken wire to stop rodents in the dialect bin. And they chewed through the plastic. So, yeah. Yeah, and Scott says, I'm on the Cambridge, Cambridge Suffolk border, so next to Newmarket, so plenty of horse manure, but I worry about what is given to the horses, medication, etc. But maybe the manure won't be affected. I wouldn't be, I mean, the, the medication, probably not so much, but I would be worried about the grass areas that they have been feeding on. Now, some farmers tend to treat their horse fields with a weed killer, anemophilids, I think it's pronounced. And that can exist in horse manure uh, poop, uh, in, in horse manure. It can, it can survive the, the gut system. And that can then lead to your broad beans not germinating, your potatoes not germinating. So you are right to be a little concerned, and I don't know how you get by without it or how you can get around it, except for doing tests. But then they could wipe out all of your compost, all of your manure for an entire season. Uh, what have we got? Uh, Salvatore, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, had a grass snake in my heap last year. It must have been boiling in there last July in the heat life heat wave we were having. Yeah, grass snakes often find themselves in compost heaps. That's where they like to lay their eggs. A uh, nice hot place for them to hatch, I guess. So incubate, that's the word I was looking for, incubate. So it's not uncommon to find uh, grass snakes in your, or any snakes really. Just think of it, that it's part of the ecosystem. If there's grass snakes, they're going to be no rodents. That's the way I like to look at it. And they're going to help slugs and snails as well. Uh, Servitor also says, have heard hair is good on the compost, counts as a green. Again, it's living material. So hair, it can be composted if you cut your beard or your hair at home. Um, use that in your compost bin, a good, good idea. Uh, but it also brings me on to other things that we may not think about. Clothes, old clothes, if, especially cotton, they can go in a compost heap. Um, in the larger compost heaps that you might find on big garden estates or big gardens, you know, where they the, the bins are huge, they get really, really hot. You often actually find the remains of old garden gloves and stuff because that just gets thrown in there. It's compost material at the end of the day. 
Uh, wary enough of normal horse manure due to the weed killers. Yeah, the anemorphalids, I believe it's pronounced. I can never say that word correctly, but I believe it is pronounced anemorphalids. Right, let's have a quick break from this. We will come back to this, don't worry, but we've got a grow along video. Now, last week you asked me to do rocket. This week I've actually managed to make the grow along video. I wasn't so burnt out this weekend. Uh, so let's have a look at this. Well, hello everybody and welcome to our Rocket So Along. And this is where we explore the wonderful world of rocket plants. One of those wonderful leafy vegetables. And I'm going to be sowing some of the seeds today. But I invite you, as always, to share your own growing tips on how you go about growing rocket seeds. Now, a bit of a history about the rocket plants themselves, also known as arugula. They have a rich heritage dating back centuries and initially cultivated in the Mediterranean regions and has since spread all over the world and become a beloved addition in many cuisines. I personally really like the flavour. Now, hopefully you can just about see the seeds. They're very, very tiny little seeds. But the flavour from, from Rocket is pretty unique. They give these nice peppery, spicy flavour. And um, really, really nice, I think. Adds a bit of kick to many salads. Now, what I'm going to sow these seeds. And I'm actually using these rubber seed trays to sow the seeds. I'm trying to get a single seed into each little plug plant uh, maker so that I can basically create my own plug plants and when they are ready I can pop them out and get them growing along. It's so just to get them started as you can imagine. I'm using multi-purpose compost, nothing special at all. Very light friable compost is the only thing I say when it comes to seed sowing. And I'm getting the seeds about half a centimetre deep so quite a, a, a shallow sowing with these. Um, now, as I said, once these are germinated and growing, we will pop them out of these plug plants and plant them into other locations. I always like to do it that way because it just works better in my garden. But what we, when we plant these out, we're going to give them about 15 centimetres of space and get them planted up and as they grow we pick the leaves as and when we need them pretty easy it has to be said um, so that's it really nothing really to say keep them well watered they are Mediterranean plants they can tolerate a little bit of uh, um, uh, drying out as such but a little bit of dryness but on a whole just keep them well watered bit of feeding with chicken manure pellets and they should be absolutely fine. Just giving these a good covering just to finish them off. I'll start these off in the greenhouse before they are ready to go out. There we go, rocket sewn and ready to go. So let me know in the comments your own tips and tricks. See you again on the next one. There we go, rocket, wild rocket, absolutely delicious salad leaf green that's a really nice peppery flavor i feel um one of my my favorites and i can't remember who who suggested it last week but we've sown it and we'll keep an eye on it i'm using those rubber plug plant starters i brought one during the week just to try and see how well they work i've yet to use my other plug plant trainer at the moment but um I'm hoping they're, going to, hoping they're going to work out great. Stuart Jackson says the rubber seed trays look great. Will last a lot longer than the plastic ones, hopefully. That's my thought as well. And I also think it's going to be easier to pop out the plug plants because I find the plastic ones, just when you're trying to get the plug plants out, they seem to break far too easily. Uh, Aaron says, I love Rock World Rocket Perennial. It even comes back after our snowy winters. There we go. Uh, that's a good reason to grow it isn't it I, I love it when a plant comes back and it's perennial and it's edible you know it's great stuff turbo stream says i'm trying to bramble stem around my courgette after it was nearly eaten by slugs seems to have worked so far good year for courgettes this year 
We're having quite a few, and they seem to keep on going. Uh, the law states that anyone using any morpholid or clopyrolid, <laughs> I can never pronounce these words, as a broadleaf weed killer must not allow any waste manure, hay or straw to leave the premises. Prosecutable by HSND. There you go. I, I, I quite agree with it. Um, quite agree. You know, I... I I don't use any weed killers. Um, there is a place for weed killers in extreme circumstances, but I don't use them. But, you know, I don't see the need in these cases. Andrew says, I love Rocket, but nasturtiums offer the same peppery taste with a bit of colour. Good idea. Good point. I love nasturtiums as well. We've got quite a few nasturtium plants in various locations in our garden, which are absolutely Fine. David says, wasn't Cloppy Rallied? Cloppy Rallied? Am I pronouncing that right? In the clangers, indeed. Uh, and Amanda has joined, says, evening all, sorry to be so late. Not a problem, lovely to see you. Anyway, so yeah, share your rocket growing tips. I will put that video out if anybody does want to put that on that when the video goes live as well. Uh, it's just my way of giving myself a few minutes break from talking all the time um, just by showing a little video. So let's carry on with this compost uh, tip. Oh, don't forget to let me know what seeds you think I should sow in next week's Grow Along as well. Got plenty of options. So get your ideas rolling. Uh, my computer is telling me thunderstorms are expected soon as well. It's going to be interesting. So back to the composting. Now, again, I come back to the material because I think it is so important. Some people will say there's a list of things that you shouldn't compost. Citrus skins, onion skins are two examples. But I'll be honest, I've always thrown them in. I do find if you mix them up, I think it's something to do with the acidity. And it's only if you have a load of them that it really causes a problem. But I throw them in with my wormery and I do not find it to be a problem. Now, I could be an exception to the rule, of course. But I just kind of feel, why would you not include them? Why would you not include them? But again, anybody got any ideas on why that is? There was a good guy... Um, the, I'm trying to think of his name. If you are into composting, the Compost King, I think he's he's also known as one of his nicknames. If you really want to find out about composting, go and check his stuff out because what he doesn't know isn't worth knowing. And again, the compost that we produce, the compost that is just so vital to the garden, it's full of those nutrients, full of those fertilizers and feeds without even applying those and we add those to the soil they feed the soil which in turn feed our plants and produce bigger and better plants and bigger and better crops so that that's the reason why we compost that is why we compost and that's i believe it was charles dowding who doesn't actually use any feeds or fertilizers he just uses the compost because it works so well um there we go nicola says i've lined my compost bays with plastic sheeting like estate agents and board material got a picture of that but i uh, when i first took on my allotment and tallies up with what nicola's saying i made my compost bins my three bay compost bins out of pallets actually it was two bay wasn't it that was i can't remember the trouble I had, a bit like what Nicola is saying here, is that the compost bins rotted quite quickly. So I didn't really want to keep doing that. But adding this board material, it's like a plastic sheeting, would have stopped them from rotting. I believe Charles Dowding uses cardboard. Uh, cardboard is another thing we could use just to line and keep the material away from the wood to stop the wood from rotting. Once it rots, I mean, the good thing with pallets, they're cheap, they're free. They often, once they rot, very easy to replace. Digwell says the general public cannot buy the any amino pop animo pyralid and cloppy rail stuff. 
so it's a big boy farmers passing it on to us yeah absolutely um absolutely it, i just think it's wrong i've seen so many people who they've taken on an allotment and i, I try not to be negative so i don't want to say but they take an allotment and the first thing they do is spray weed killer and I, I cannot stand the stuff. It's one thing I cannot stand. It has its place, don't get me wrong. But the overuse of weed killer is what I don't think is right. And the fact that it can then stay on into our compost as well worries me a lot. Andrew says, would you add oak leaves and walnut leaves to your compost? We have plenty of both. I would. I personally would. Um, I know some leaves are considered to take a bit longer. Oak leaves, I think, they may take a bit longer to rot down, but I would completely add them to your compost. Leaves or anything like that, If you, it's just getting hold of the material. If you can get hold of it, then add it to your compost. And why not? Why not? It's all about making as much compost as possible. Uh, Stuart Jackson, I've spent the day in the garden today in between the rain. I found that my square compost bin is working well. Not bad for £8 from Tesco's last autumn. Keep a lookout for the bargains, indeed. We all keep an eye out for the bargains. I believe Wilco's at the moment are doing their, or start their sales on seeds very early this year, but if you can get in there, go and make them in. Uh, you know, oh, no. uh, Nicholas says, I throw them in. Charles Dowden does... Are you thinking of Simplified Gardener? No, I'm think I can't think of his name. There we go. Digwell's got it. Mick Pulteney, the compost kin king. That's the guy. That is the guy. And Tower Stream, Mick Pulteney from How Sewing is the compost kin king. Um, there we go. There, the, there we go. Mick Pulteney. That's the guy I was thinking of. If you want to learn about composting, he's a guy to go and follow. Uh, Nicholas says, my pallets are treated with water-based treatment, then lined, and the posts are tantalised four by four. The pallets are not touching the ground. Yeah, great stuff. Um, again, the, the, this is, again, I try not to treat any of my wood. I just feel if it's in contact with stuff, you may cause issues. Yeah, my my personal thoughts on it. I'm always worried. I try and keep as natural as possible. But when it comes to these wood things, they do rot. They will rot eventually. I'm looking at even some of my beds that look like they could be showing signs of rotting. Just a problem. Just a problem. I uh, dig well in reply to Andrews about adding walnut and oak leaves. He says no to walnut. It contains a chemical that inhibits all other plant growth. Did not know that. And Stuart Jackson says... I have found oak, well, he says oat leaves, but I think that's meant to be oak leaves work better if you chop chop them up. I find that's the same with all leaves. You know, chop them all up and they should do much better. Um, my concern is adding tannin to the mix, says Andrew, walnut leaves. Does the tanning break down and become harmless? Um, I'm going to I'm going to use nature as an example. I think it would eventually break down. If you go into a wood, you the leaves, nobody sweeps up the leaves from a wood. They fall down around the base and break down around there. And you often find it full of life, including plant life. So I think the tanning should be okay. The only thing I would say is if it's in high quantities – you probably need to mix it with loads and loads of grass to try and reduce the amount. But I would add, I'm no expert on that. I'm just using my my brain to logically work this out. Um, but as uh, as as Digwell says, with a walnut, we, they could inhibit the growth. Again, I would say if you can, Andrew, in your case, experiment. Set a bin up with oak leaves, set a bin up with walnut leaves and see if there's any difference, you know. And um, you're in a, in a prime chance to try and uh, experiment that. And if you go into the wood, there's no growth around a walnut tree, which is very, very true, as Digwell says. There is very little growth around a walnut tree. Um, 
but if you cut down that walnut tree, plants do tend to grow or come back in time. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. As I said, no expert on that particular field, but I'd the, the idea is to share ideas. Uh, they lied with plastic and have a roof. I don't think they will come into contact with water. Talking about her three bedded bays. Her free, I've got a picture of those, which we'll get into in a minute. Stuart Jackson, all leaves work well in compost as long as you don't put too much in the time. Remember, you can always use a leaf bag. In fact, talking of leaf bags, I, I'm tidying out my shed and I found some of my leaf bags, funny enough. Roxy's been out that one, eh? Um, we can fill these up in the winter. I don't know why I was holding on to these. I'm going to fill those up in the winter with more leaves in order to make more leaf mould. Um, there we go. So, yeah, lots lots of ideas going on. So over to you guys once again. Any other questions, any other tips on composting? Uh, that would be great. You know, what what what... Do you have any special setups? I know, as Nicola said, she has, I mean, she's got a huge three acre um, setup where she is. And she's built uh, three bay compost bins with a roof, catch water, of course, which looks absolutely fantastic. You will see it in the photos a little bit later on. Anybody else got anything similar? Or would you like to have the room to do that sort of thing? I would. I would love the room to do that sort of thing. Uh, for me, as I said, I've got the Dalek compost bins at home. I've got four of those. I've got my wormery tower, which is great because I add my kitchen waste material to that and build it up. I've got my sub pod, which for me is my favorite way to compost at home because it's discreet. That's what I like about it. And I'm going to be getting more of them to try and incorporate into my garden. Um, and, and and hide these things all over the place. So uh, down on the allotment, I have got several Dalek bins, which are filling up nicely. I've got the cones. Now, these are similar. They're, they're basically a plastic cone. And you, the idea being you pop them into a bed and you fill all the material up into the cone and you garden around it and they just naturally feed the soil. But to be honest, and I feel the same with the Daleks, that to get the compost out, even on the Daleks, you get that little door, which is no good to anything, in my opinion. I just lift the bin straight up and scoop the, the, the compost material out. And it's the same with the cones as well, I find. Just throw that in there, basically. Um, just my way of... Um, of, of my systems. Then I've got the large metal compost bin that I built a few months ago, which is working great. Um, and then my old compost bins, my wooden ones have deteriorated to the point I'm throwing them apart. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I add a layer of the previous heap into my base to hopefully kickstart the new heaps off. Good idea. And nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, Nicola says, I've used dumpy bags for leaf collection, leaf compost. I think, did I? Um, did I, did I, did I already read that one? I'm not sure. And uh, Andrew, by the way, how is Roxy? A little off subject. She's good. She's absolutely good. She's, um, very playful, but she's starting to sort of, she's two years old in a few weeks time, believe it or not. And she started to go from that puppy to dog stage and start to chill out. Stuart Jackson, I heard a good podcast on composting from a well-known veg growers. Uh, cannot recommend it highly enough. Uh, Nicola says, it's hard work filling the compost bay as they are six by five feet each bay and there are four of them. Um, again, you know, six by five, they're big, but that's what you need. With three acres, you need a lot of compost. Uh, can't really add from experience on the compost as I cannot compost this dig well. Again, this is where I feel in your case, the sub pod, if you go look it up, the sub pod is a great answer. I know you're not necessarily allowed it when you're on your allotment, 
but I think they're discreet enough that you might get away with it, Digwell. Just a thought, just a thought to throw out there for you. Uh, what else have we got? Gary says, a question. I have a mini roof over my compost bins to collect water. Would it be better letting my compost get wet, though? So, actually, that's a very good point. Something we haven't really touched upon is keeping your compost heap damp, keeping it moist. It does need a little bit of moisture into your compost bins. A good thing with Daleks, because they're sealed, they tend to hold on to that moisture. But if your compost bins are open, in the summer, you might need to add a bit of water to your compost heap. It just helps rot it down. If it goes dry, it doesn't really rot down very efficiently. This is another reason that I find by planting a pumpkin plant into the compost bin, it encourages you to water the compost bin and keep the compost material moist. But if it's too wet, it, again, it can go a little bit anaerobic. So it does depend if it's free draining or not. If it's sopping, soaking wet, it's not going to be any good. That being said, if you've got a roof on it and you can collect water for your, for your garden, that's probably better. Just remember every now and then to add a bit of water to your compost heap just to, to hold on to it. Uh, what else have we got? Got Chili Kate says a quick hello from Normandy. Happy composting, everyone. Get my worms has changed how we compost at home. Yep, wormery at home. It, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Big, big fan of wormeries at homes. Um, uh, what about potting compost materials in trenches at the bottom of beds if you can't have compost bins? Um, You've got, a, yeah, um, so that is called trench composting. That is a way, especially with runner beans and French beans, where you dig a trench, you fill it up with your compost material, and you cover it over with uh, the soil that you've dug out, and then you plant into that. It is a good way. It is a very good way. It's part of Bokashi, or how Bokashi is meant to work as well. Um and it's kind of similar to what I've done with the beds that I compost in situ. So, yeah, it definitely does work, is all I can say. Um, I've not done it myself, but that's because I try not to dig. Build the soil up, I guess, is the way around it. Uh, Digra says, I looked at the sub pot, <laughs> but it would reduce my growing area too much. Only a small plot, remember. I haven't forgotten, but they do the small sub pod, which is probably about the size of one person's seat but it doubles up as a seat just remember that if you've got if you need someone to sit down it might be the answer that's all i'm saying dig well it just if you've looked at it fine you know um personally i'm going to get more of them because i think they are great turbo stream my bays are open in the summer i have a wet winter covered them to prevent them getting too warm now Turbo streams actually hit on something else. Some people, if you've got the open compost heaps, they actually do pot a top over it to try and hold on to that heat a little bit more and that moisture. Usually it's carpet, but most allotments do ban carpet from being on your allotment, so it can't be used. A wooden top can work or anything like that as well. Personally, once again, I tend to leave mine open just for convenience because I find it... If I got a lid on it, I'm less likely to use it. But it's something to think about, isn't it? It's something else to throw into the mix. Um, and Bally Cillian says to Digro, could you cite the sub pod on the path instead of a bed? We're not sponsored by sub pod or anything like that. I just like the systems. Uh, because nothing stopping you from building your own, I guess, if you are into that. Um, but good thoughts, good thoughts is all I say. Shall we have a look at some of your photos now? It's probably a good time to see what's gone in. It's been some great photos going up in the group lately, um, as well as being sent to me. So, first of all, Anne, she's picked a load of garlic scapes. Uh, she is watching tonight and she's been pickling them. Pickled garlic scapes. I've never heard of it, but I thought that sounds like a great idea for something we could try in the future. Nick Stewart has been sowing the seeds. These are all from the VegGrow Podcast Supporters Club, although I'm a 
bit concerned about the marks on the Pak Choi packet. I'm hoping that was something to do with the post office. But um, yes, he sowed three packs of seeds today alone. Um, good going indeed. Still time to sow plenty of seeds. Next, Ian is asking, what is this? It looks to me a bit like an alien, possibly an onion or garlic, maybe even shallots. He's gone away on to um, Spain or Portugal for a couple of months and came back and found these. Uh, Steve has enjoyed a nice homegrown dinner, a.k.a. Digwell. Uh, everything on that plate was homegrown except for the, the, the pig, the pork. So we've got broad beans, we've got peas, we've got onions, we've got cabbage, we've got French beans and potatoes, all homegrown. Absolutely fantastic. Now, Kate has managed a week without the stick on the allotment. As we know, we've discussed about this in the past, having to use a... Um, a walking stick to get around the allotment doesn't make things easy, but this has been the first year, week she's managed it without a stick. So well done, Kate, on that. Looks fantastic, your allotment, I've got to say. Really does look like you've been working hard. And next, Shipyard Garner has had a good picking of potatoes. I think these were Ramos, if I remember correctly. Look absolutely beautiful and a good, good load of potatoes. Uh, Nicola, we've been talking about the compost bays. This is one of her bays. The, the, the other two are next to it, as you can see, with the roof over the top. It's quite a significant structure. Lots of horse manure in there. Again, if we had the space, this is what we would look at doing as well. But fantastic to see. Uh, Scott has sent in this picture of his allotment. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? You really get to see how big his allotment is from this picture. Nice long size, isn't it? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Jenny has harvested her blue Danube potatoes, which look absolutely beautiful. There was a question whether they retain the colour when cooked, but they do. Nice to see different colour potatoes, doesn't it? Just to add a bit of a bit of variation to the plate, a bit of change, a bit of curiosity. Uh, so that is it. Keep sharing those photos, please, guys. Please do keep posting them in our Facebook group if you are on Facebook. Or you can send them to me via social media. We are on Instagram. We are on Facebook. We are on TikTok. We are on the threads. We are on Twitter. We don't use Twitter much, though. And, of course, we are on YouTube as well. Probably more that I'm on, but I'm not aware of. But Threads at the moment seems to be the, the new one. TikTok is also pretty good, I find. Uh, or you can email me, richard at the uk. Another way to get in touch if that's what you want to do. Great photos, indeed. Great pictures. As Stuart Jackson says, great pictures this week. They're really good photos, I've got to say. And lots of to see what's happening. Uh, Andrew says, love the picture of all the homegrown veg on a plate. This is what we live for. Bravo. Indeed we do. Indeed. This is why we grow our own veg, isn't it? For dinners like that. Dinners that we can say everything on this plate. We have grown. We have. We are so pleased because it's got no chemicals on it. We, it's got no food miles. We put the effort in. I'm getting really agitated with this because it's so passionate of mine. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andrew says, Lose, love those black potatoes. What colour are they when you cut into them? They're blue. They're almost like a violet right the way through. They are absolutely stunning. Um, um, see what happens. Uh, what happens? Um, let's go. Have I missed some comments? Where were we? Uh, Gary says... I tried the trench method with kitchen compost for runner beans last year, and they were great. Coincidence, got a lot of random, random potatoes this year, though. That's the trouble. If you've got potato skins or potatoes, they could potentially grow. So I'm always trying to be a bit careful with potatoes. That's why I prefer to put them in my wormery, because generally speaking, they don't survive that method. Andrew says, my compost heap is a wooden frame in the shade. I'm wondering whether it would be better in the sun. Thoughts? It possibly could be better in the sun. Don't know. Depends on how hot it gets. It 
difficult one to really answer. That being said, if you're trying to grow food, most plants are better off in the sun. And if you've got your compost heap in the shade, you're not going to be able to use the plant. So probably best to keep the sunny areas or use the shady area for the compost heap. Scott says, has anyone used indoor smart kitchen composter? I haven't. I think they're a bit of a con. I think you talked about the ones that say they produce compost in a day. I don't think that will work at all. Uh, Gary says, can you give the recipe, please, Anne, for the pickled garlic scapes? Um, hopefully that would be out there. Uh, Idaho says, Howie at Food Forest Permaculture makes new soil burying compostable material beneath garden pathways. Next year, he digs up the pathways and uses a compost all over his yard. Calls it pathway soil bank. That's an interesting idea. Very interesting idea. Um, yeah, very interesting idea. Um, a lot of comments on the phone. Let, let's go through them. Uh, well done, Steve, for the, the dinner on the plate. Well, Jenny, all great crop, interesting variety. That's the potatoes. Bally Cillian says, great harvest by the shipyard gardener. Indeed. Uh, Stuart Jackson, great pictures this week. I think I read that one. I think I've done that one. Um, well, Jenny, great crop, interesting variety of the potatoes. I think I've done that one, actually. Thanks for your photos, everyone. Really enjoy them. Please do keep sending them in. They are great. So many great pictures, indeed. Lovely photos, everyone, indeed. Uh, Andrew says, love those. Oh, no, read that one. I don't remember that. Uh, Digwell says, my turnip and chard were the same as Stuart's, mate. I have the same issues with the club seeds I send out. Some have returned to me. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, Digwell? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, my turnip and chard were the same as Stuart's, mate. I have the same issues. Have I missed a comment or something? Seems like I'm missing something. Belly Sillian says, I have to praise the shipyard gardener. He's my brother. There you go. I did not know that. So there you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Andrew says, I want those potatoes. I'm sure you can get them. I'm sure you must be able to get them in uh, where you are. Must be. Must be. My David says, my spuds didn't go in till beginning of June. Praying the blight keeps away this year. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that we don't get any blight this year. Tomatoes seem to be avoided it this year. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting. Scott says, "I th yeah, I thought they were a bit suspect. And what have I missed something? What have I missed? What have I? Oh, indoor smart. Yeah, I, I'm not sure on them. I, I think they're too good to be true, and that normally means bad things. Gary says, I'm mega jelly of the potato harvest, so really great. Um, yeah, that's a big, big problem. Big, big problem. Um, sorry, I got distracted by Digwell, so I've just seen it. Seeds crushed in the post, so I had to resend them. Did somebody's seeds get crushed? Um, that's annoying. That's annoying. If it ever happens, let me know and I will send them back out. Um, I, yeah, first I've heard about it. So, yeah. Anna says, has anyone tried Google culture? Lots of failed attempts on YouTube. Doesn't seem as easy as it's made out to be. Maybe it takes too long. Now, I've tried Google culture and I have got a bed. It's my onion bed this year that we've done Google culture with. For those that don't know, the Google culture basically is a method where you put wooden logs on the bottom, then you would put wood chip, compost, and then grow into that compost. And the idea being the wood acts as like a sponge, holds onto water, and wicks the soil up. But it does, it does work. I found it does work. It, it does need regular topping up with fresh compost because it does drop down quite quickly and does level out. But I find um, I, I find it does work, but you've got to keep on top of it. It's a system. 
Uh, Stuart said, my seeds are okay. It was just that the postie damaged the packet when pushing them into the letterbox. The seeds are fine. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Um, otherwise, we'll have to uh, bubble wrap seeds in the future if it does become a problem. Um, but I did see the damage on that packet, and it worried me when I saw that. Digwell says, Hugel culture is great in the first year, but the beds need topping up every year with fresh compost. Agreed. Agreed. Um, yeah, I agree. It does need topping up with fresh compost quite regularly every year. I mean, you should be doing that anyway, in my opinion. It does need topping up with fresh compost every year. It does drop down. It does level out. But actually, I've got to say, in terms of holding on to moisture, it's done pretty well this year. It's held on to quite a bit of moisture. Haven't had to really water the onions that much. Onions are shallow rooted, so you expect them to struggle. Uh, it'd be interesting next year. Next year, the hugel culture is going to be used for peas and beans. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with those next year and how well they do. So probably be peas because they're quite tall uh, in that bed. So, yeah, I, I can't say. I mean, it's still too early to say because uh, I haven't harvested my onions as of yet. Um We'll see what happens. Digwell says Stuart's photo showed a packet of crushed seeds. Yes, sorry, I'm with you now, Digwell. My, my, <laughs> sorry, uh, you know how it is doing these things. Your mind's all over the place. I, I'm with you, with you. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'd uh, worried, I'd get worried about that, isn't it? S Royal Mail. Um, Yeah, I, I, there's no alternatives to Royal Mail for letters, but Royal Mail does an amazing service most of the time. But every now and then, and they're in a rush, they've got things to do, so you understand it. But when damage happens, it needs answers. Uh, Anne says, one lunch of one large bunch of garlic scapes, about half a pound, two cups of apple cider vinegar. This is a recipe for garlic, uh, the garlic pickled garlic scapes. Two cups of apple cider vinegar, two cups of water, two tablespoons of kosher salt, one tablespoon of raw sugar, turn bean dough, half a teaspoon of peppercorns, half a teaspoon of mustard seeds. Um, these measurements are for two 32 ounce mason jars. Combine water, vinegar, sugar, and salt. Add also add pickling spice once dissolved, pour over scapes in jar. That's it chop into salads there we go there you go uh, uh gary says i've never had a problem with your seeds but magazine seeds went missing all the time there we go um and thanks and i will give it a go sounds interesting my garlic scapes it's too late for my garlic scapes but next year i might give that a go as well Idaho says, however, however long it takes logs to deteriorate in nature is kind of what would happen in the Hugo culture garden bed. Yes, we've got to remember, got to remember that these logs are buried under soil as well, so they are constantly moist on all sides. So they're not going to dry out as if they were in the air, but they do have this, like this wicking effect, draws up moisture from below and spreads it into those beds. So all, all, all good. I'm good in that, but they will rot down in time. But that's not a problem because they're still sort of there. They're still going to be doing that method. Uh, the idea being, it just creates, um, it just creates a moisture bank, as I understand it, a, a water reserve. Uh, I had three monthly packs to a certain address arrive. Crush. I thought he was stamping on them. Yeah, it's obviously one person, one one of the one person who um, wasn't quite as respectful, shall we say, as many of the other Royal Mail workers. So yeah, um, I know uh, I haven't seen Richard Golding. I know he works for Royal Mail, so he can probably tell us more about why this has possibly happened than anybody. Um, I don't know. Right, we have got about 15 minutes to go of the show. It's gone really quick. and It's been a really good conversation talking about composting and compost heaps. 
Uh, so if you've enjoyed this chat, don't forget to give us a like. Don't forget to follow. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click the notifications so that you know when we go live. On that note, so we've got to think about next week's topic. We need a seed that we can sow for the grow up, the sow along, as I'm calling it now, next week. Um, but the topics that we have, using grow your own to lose weight, smoothie recipes, green manures, designing a show garden, which if we do that, we're going to get somebody in, so maybe not. Uh, favorite tool, a garden design, why do we grow your own? Butternut squash recipes and must have garden tools are the subjects I've got on my list of possibles. If anybody else can come up with any more, then please feel free to add your own thoughts as well for, for topics that we can discuss. And as I said, I could do with a seed to sow over the next week for the sow along as well. Um, Kate says, I'm doing a lot of smoothies that so can contribute to that. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of smoothies at the moment as well. But to be honest, I'm not really coming up with a recipe or I'm just picking them and, uh, and seeing what we can do. Um, so smoothies for one. We've then got Stuart Jackson says, who knew we could talk about composting for over an hour? It's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing when we get into it. Uh, David says, green manures are squash recipes for me. Um, why do we grow our own sounds good from Scott. Digwell is siding with David Green David uh green manures or squash recipes. Um so those two are in the lead. What how about perennial vegetables? I'll put that on the list. Put that on the list for possible ones as well. Perennial vegetables. I'll add that to the list. Bally Cillian, what about various green what various green manures do for the Sioux? At the moment, they nest three votes for green manures. So that one looks like it's going to be out in the lead. Digwell says a load of yeah. <laughs> what we've been talking about, yeah. <laughs> Just goes to show though, isn't it? Composting, as I said at the beginning, is probably one of the most important things that we can do to improve our gardening. And it's a free resource that we would throw away. Um, we we don't send any kitchen waste to landfill or down our green waste. We don't send any of our garden waste to away either. We compost everything here. So definitely something that, like that. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, smoothie sounds great for next week. So that was two for smoothies. At the moment, it's looking like Thomas has got him with green manures. Four votes for green manures. Um, and Andrew Norris has said, oh, yes, green manures. So that's five votes for green manures. Um, it, I, I think Andrew is off as well. Lovely evening. Thanks for your company tonight. Keep our labor on and enjoy your garden. Still got 10 minutes to go, so um, plenty of time yet. But green manures, it looks like it's going to be in the lead for next week. Good Good subject, I've got to say. One of my favourite things as well, and I feel it's as important as composting as part of our system. Um, uh, Nicholas, going to stay night, waiting to go into hospital as kidney infection, not improving, and now my legs, severe pain and swelling since yesterday. Nicola, you take care of yourself. You get yourself off to hospital you take care of yourselves. Um, very important. Very important. Uh, David Williams, composting is also fun for me, and to see the finished product gives you a sense of satisfaction. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Very, very important. And says, I vote smoothies. So that's three votes for smoothies now. Steel Green Manures is in the lead. Um, it's a shame I can't set up any polls on this to get everybody to vote on the on the thing. But yeah, we can do smoothies another time. You've just got to vote for it because I love smoothies at the moment. Really do love my smoothies. I eat so many of them. I go to you've probably seen them on my 
my short videos. I'll pick some, some stuff out of the garden, add some yogurt or some milk, whatever it might be that day, take it to work. I, I put it into my battery-powered blender, which is great. Go to work. I'll get to work. I'll mix it all up, and then I'll drink it, and that's my breakfast sorted. Um, I really do feel healthier for it. It's the same about smoothies, isn't it, that you just suddenly feel like you're – like. You know, like people say, when they go down the gym, they come out of it thinking they're He-Man. Same with smoothies. I come out of it thinking, yeah, I can take on the world. Uh, anyway, anyway. Uh, Idaho says, oh, my gosh, Nicola, feel better soon indeed. Uh, take care, Nicola, says Stuart as well. Valley soon says, I feel bean seeds for overwintering and need advice. What else to grow green manures? Good one, good one. Uh, David says, my uncle and my uncle's dog also votes for green with yours. Uh, and time is doing green with your smoothie recipes. Well, I tell you what, what we could do, could we blend the two together? Don't think we could quite blend the two together. But I'm going to throw this out there. If anybody wants to send in a smoothie recipe video, um, if anybody wants to send in a smoothie recipe video on a weekly basis, and I'm saying this because we've got we we I think we've got somebody for our resident chef on the podcast on the Monday Night Audio podcast. Um, I think we've got a resident chef, but if anybody or you know any of you wants to send in almost like a weekly smoothie recipe in a video that we can then play in each week that might be a way around it as well uh, Stuart Jackson I'm happy for smoothies as long as they are not green nothing wrong with green smoothies I've got to say yeah. uh, Digwell says it was smoothies that gave me diabetes um, yep yeah, indeed indeed take care Nicola did my A&E turn early this year yeah, please take care, Nicola. Hopefully you are still there. Gary says, distracted by kids' bedtimes. Grow alongs. When is a good time for sowing spinach? Green manure sounds great, but so does smoothies. Uh, Gary, you've added a vote to each one. Um, yeah, that's a difficult one. But are you, when's a good time for sowing spinach? So spinach, February for the first sowing, and then probably August for the second sowing. But... You're the only one that's actually said anything that we could do for a solo long. So we can do spinach next week as well. That sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, David says, if you blend them together, then you really would get green manure smoothies indeed. Um, manure smoothie, delicious. And Turbo Stream says, agree with Digwell, whole fruit is better for the digestive system, less sugar spikes. Yeah, I I I know what you're saying there. Again, I, I I feel when we start touching on those sort of digestive systems and things like that, we really need a nutritionalist to talk about that particular area um, as an expert. I really could do with knowing a nutritionalist to get there their take on these sort of things at some point, couldn't we? Um, yeah. Idaho says, every day I drink green sludge full of ground-up vegetables. My dad calls it pond scum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, but I do like it. I do like it. Uh, Kate says, I've got a great recipe for green smoothie that doesn't taste like the bottom of a compost bin. Excellent. Love that. Love that. As I said, we will... Smoothies is on my list of things that we want to do, so um, we will have to do this. Spinach sounds like great for next. So spinach for the sour long, and it looks like at the moment green manures for the main topic. But if anybody does want to each week send in a smoothie recipe, you're more than welcome to, especially if it is something that you are harvesting at the time. Um I do love a good smoothie. I've got to say, I do love smoothies. I definitely feel healthier for it. Although it could just be the yogurt that's doing it for me, to be honest. Five minutes to go to the end of this show. I don't know why I start counting down. It just seems to make life a little bit easier for everyone to know when we've got 
but that still gives you five minutes to add any final thoughts, any final questions on composting or next week's subject. Um, I'm trying to plan these out ahead a little bit more so I can actually get things to discuss and go through. Hence why I, I make huge lists of, of things that we talk about. And I think we're there. I think we are there. Uh, right. As I, as, as I said, uh, a podcast coming out tomorrow or Monday, as always, the audio podcast that is every Monday without fail. And in that, we're actually discussing how we go about growing basil just because it's that time of year. And I've learned a few tricks with growing basil that it's worth noting. And I want to share those to try and get everybody to grow some decent basil. Basil can be sown all times as well. Uh, what have we got? What have we got? Uh, Bally Sillian says, bye all. See you next week. Don't forget the like button on your way out. Thank you very much, Bally Sillian. You, you take care. David Williams, rhubarb seed. Too late yet. Too late for rhubarb seed. You really do those January, February, March. I grew a load of rhubarb from seed this year. They're out there on the on the table looking absolutely fantastic. I'm really pleased with seeing what these rhubarb are growing into and um, really are looking quite fantastic um they're, they're young and they're not harvestable at the moment but they are from grown from seeds you know you never really think of growing rhubarb from seed but it's been done i've done it and it is going to turn into a fascinating thing uh turbo stream says another great show have a good week everybody we've still got a couple minutes to go i don't know why everyone's i, I knew if i said it too early people would start winding up and get out of here but uh, there's still plenty of time to go. Um, yeah. Um, rhubarb seeds, as I said, January, February, March. They are a great one to grow from from seed because you don't really think of growing them from seed. They do take a few years to be actually to the size that you know you can start harvesting them. But when you can buy a pack of seeds pretty cheap and they grow into these pretty big, amazing plants, I think it is worthwhile. Uh, Aaron says, I'd love to see a video on rhubarb seedlings. I will try and do that for you then. Um, I'll, try, I'll probably put that out as a short, actually, or something. We'll see what happens. Uh, Typo Stream says, I'm still here. Idaho says, it's okay, Richard, still here. And uh, Digwell says, buy all as well, yeah. Funny enough, I'm, I'm looking at the numbers, and as everyone's saying goodbye, the numbers are going up. So it always makes me laugh. Always makes me laugh. Idaho says, I let some of my rhubarb go to seed last year, and the wind blew the seeds everywhere. And now I have seedlings coming up everywhere. So I have a rhubarb nursery. You know what? This is something I thought about because the rhubarb had been so easy to grow from seed, I thought it was quite easy to get some rhubarb, uh, like a rhubarb nursery going along. And rhubarb can be pretty cheap, but you know what? It's well worth it. Well worth it. Uh, Adrian says, good night, Richard and all. Good night, Adrian. Um, rhubarb up last two years. I hope we get them again next year. Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, I probably will do rhubarb. I tend to do that in January because it's such a good one to grow. So easy to grow. And it's one that can be done in January. Scott says, I have basil seedlings from the last supporter seed that need potting on. So looking forward to tomorrow's podcast. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea there. I get them into a bigger pot, but there is a, a tip I've got for you for that. Uh, thanks, everyone, for another great live show. Oh, yeah, it's half past. See you all next week, but I'm staying to the end. Um. Turbo stream, £1.40 for free rhubarb sticks in Morrison's. Exactly, very expensive. Um, oops, I meant to say, messed up my rhubarb last two years. Uh, there will be some next year. I can guarantee you that because I love growing the stuff. Stay to the end. Thanks for another great chat. See you all next week. Cheers all. Take care and have a great week. Indeed, I think it is now half past seven, so it is time to say Abby Dirty, goodbye, and all that. It's been a good chat, though, I've got to say. Really good chat. I know we've been talking about compost, which isn't sexy, but it is such an important part of growing your own. We've had a really good conversation, I've got to say. 
Thank you so much to everyone for your contributions and your chat. Anybody who has watched the video on a replay, thanks so much for watching as well. We will be back again next Sunday at six, where we're going to be talking about green manures and have a spinach grow along. All right, you take care, guys. I'll see you all again next time.